من قراس ثلاثين آية من ليلة لم يضره تلك الليلة السبعة دار ولا تسعة تارك في في نفسي وأهلي ومالي حتى يصبح Prophet said, whoever in the night has recited 30 verses of the Qur'an in the night, in that night, nothing at all can give him pain internally, no thief can give him pain, or no other affliction can affect him. You know, rather, that that person, for his self, for his family, his wealth, and all there will be salama, there will be peace and prosperity. So brothers, in other words, um, the Qur'an that Allah Ta'ala has given us a connection with. فَأَنزَلْتُ It is a very and great, but, but the real genuine objective that Allah has given us, the message in the Qur'an, which is the essence of the Qur'an, the objective of the Qur'an, that is what we need to believe in. If we do everything else that we discussed, no doubt, no doubt, all the rewards Allah has kept, all of those things, and just some rewards I've, uh, I've mentioned to you by these hadith. But the top of the pile, top of the list, the reason why the Qur'an was revealed, why Allah gave us the Qur'an, the message that He wanted to give to us, Allah says, that message, believe in it. Whoever has done everything else, but has not accepted the message of the Qur'an, then he has done nothing at all. All thawab he will lose out also. Remember this point. Remember this point. So the message that Allah has given in the Quran, Allah says, the message I gave to you is not a new message. Musaddiq al-lima ma'akum. Musaddiq al-lima. That those other kitabs in which that the Quran also accepts them, confirms them. All the previous kitabs came with the same message. Yes, the Quran accepts that, confirms that. Musaddiq Allah said that the previous kitabs, the Torah, Injil, Zabur, other kitabs, scriptures, all of them, they were great and they were honorable. And their rank, their status, all the ummas that got kitabs, these were the messages of Allah. Same message, and that's also included in the final message in the Quran. Allah's uh, explaining about the Bani Israel. They also had a message in their kitabs, was present this message. And this message for giving to you, this message, the Torah, the Injil, the Zabur, the Anbiya, the Adam alayhi salam. We're seeing, isn't it, that this is continuing, it's continuing. And the final Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa one message Allah Ta'ala wanted to give to everybody, one message Allah Ta'ala delivered. So, all of the essence of the Qur'an, the whole situation, Allah says that we need to focus on that message, what Allah Ta'ala has revealed to us, what is that message? That my final Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Bring such belief in, in him, believe in him in such a way, Ati Allah wa Ati ur Rasul. That the Holy Prophet Muhammad says, total ittiba, total obedience and following. Sunnah ittibai Rasul. Follow the Sharia, follow the Sunnah. Obey the Sharia, obey the Sunnah. This is the message. Allah says, believe in this. This is the message that came from Adam alayhi salam till the hereafter. And this is what a person has to have in and becomes Muslim. We say, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. This is the detail behind the kalima tayyibah. La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. That there's no other order apart from Allah. We have to believe in Allah, accept His orders. And, and we won't follow anybody except for the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi Allah's Nabi. And there's no other imitation, no other following. And this is the essence of the message of the Qur'an, where Allah says that this is what you have to believe in, what I've given to you. When Allah says, وَأَمِنُوا بِمَا أَنزَلْتُ When a person believes in this, accepts this, what do we have to believe in? The hukum. And he has to accept that, embrace that his life then is spent according to Sharia and Sunnah. He's accepted that. That's called believing and accepting. So then, after that, the rewards about the Qur'an, the virtues that we've been told, a person receives them and he deserves them. If you live a life opposite to this, then Allah says, وَلَا تَكُونُوا أَوَّلَ كَافِرٍ bi." Then Allah says, you will be first the, the initiator of that sin, the rejecter of the message of the Qur'an, who has rejected this message and left this message, not done no amal and practiced on it. So look at this point. Today, if we, if today we 
live our lives, if we don't live our lives according to this message, if we don't live our life according to this, then our situation will be such that we will be those people who initiated, we were the beginning of, and we invited people towards that sin of not practicing. Then the other people, the Yahud, yes they had the message in the Torah, the Zabur, the previous nations, Injil, yes, Allah mentioned, Gave them, he said, the Holy Prophet will come. But for us, we have the final kitab, we believe in that kitab, they, and they didn't have the Qur'an before us. So we are those people, the fir- we are those people who first had the Qur'an, we were given the Qur'an, we believed in it, accepted it, confirmed it. So if we don't accept this message, the essence, if we live at your Rasul, and we live our lives opposite to that, then we will be first in the line that we initiated that sin of leaving at your Rasul, and all the people who follow us, look at us, and, and be guided by us, misguided by us, they say, oh, this is their deen, there's, no deen. there's nothing in the deen that says that do this and do that. So all the people who commit the sin, then that complete sin punishment will come onto our heads, due to those people who live opposite to Ittabai Rasul, who live their life against the Sharia, away from the Sharia, away from following the Nabi because they see us, and other people are influenced by that. Then all the sin will come on our head. وَلَا تَكُونُوا كَافِرٌ أَوَّلَ كَافِرٍ بِي Their sin will be on our head in the hereafter and we will have to answer for that, Allah says. So Allah says, be not first to disbelieve therein. Now look here. Of two reasons that Ummah gets spoiled. One is the ulama, one is the mashayikh. These are the two pillars of our deen. That after the Anbiya, they look after, they have the possession of the knowledge of the deen, the ulema and the mashayikh. They have a great status, great responsibility in our deen. The alim, the scholar, we can understand his status, how great is his rank. He's a sheikh, a spiritual leader, we can't understand. Imagine the maqam Allah has given to a sheikh. Why? Because he is the guide, he's spreading the deen. Yes, Allah says that this is what وَآمِمَا أَنزَلْتُ He's spreading this. He is raising the standard, the flag bearer of Islam. He is holding the genuine reason, the genuine meaning of the Qur'an, the, the, the genuine demonstration. And they give their time and effort for this, the ulama and the mashayikh. Yes, they give their time and effort. They sacrifice their time and effort for this, for the deen, for Allah Ta'ala's deen. So when they sell, get sold out, the ulema or the mushaykh, when they sell themselves or get sold out, then this the meaning of this verse has a hakim al-ummat stated. وَلَا تَشْتَرُوا بِآيَةِ ثَمَنًا قَلِيلًا وَإِيَّا فَتَّقُونَ To leave the orders and to change, modify, to conceal. And this is the bargain, the transaction to, to earn and by wretchedness in society. What? That when ulema, remember, the ulema, when the name comes, then two characteristics of nalim. One the ulema haq, one the ulema su, ulema batil, false. The mashayikh, when the name comes, one is the mashayikh haq, one is the mashayikh su, the batil, the false mashayikh. The, 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 the genuine milk and the fake milk. Yeah? Same way. Two opposites. So the pure alim, he's different. In the hand is the Quran and Sharia. Batil alim, false, he's different. See the difference. So who does this? Who did this? Those people. How does the deen spoil? How does an alim get spoiled? That when he runs into the trap of earning dunya, wealth, money, make money on the Qur'an, make money on the points of the Qur'an, the deen. On every point he wants to earn money, cash, money, wealth, he earns, earns ilm for making money. Hazakim al-Ummat Rahmatullah said upon this point, that to leave the hakams, the orders, they change the deen, they hide the deen, they conceal the deen, for which reason? And this is the way to earn wretchedness, to earn the wretched dunya, they conceal the deen and hide the truth. Allahu Akbar. To save their dunya, their worldly luxuries, to become rich and wealthy, they become physically, materially wealthy by concealing and hiding the truth. So what did they do? The ulay makram, the, the respective uh, scholars, the Torah, and Jil, the previous nations, they did this. The, the scholars, the previous nations, they modified the verses or sold the meaning of the verse. Even if someone gives you a million pounds with regards to something in the world, do this. 
then that is dunya world in comparison to the hereafter is not even equivalent to a dot there's no value of that million pounds compared to the akhirah wala takunu awwala kafirun bi wala tashtaru bi ayati thamanan qalila so 